After the Twin Towers collapsed on 9-11, 90,000 first responders and volunteers worked 24 hours a day for 10 months to clean up debris and recover human remains. Among the piles of warped steel and crushed concrete, there was a lurking danger in the air. The collapse had pulverized 400 tons of asbestos into a fine dust that hung like a fog. Though precautions were taken, the extent of damage asbestos does to the airways could not be understated. As of 2024, 34,000 of the 90,000 workers have developed asbestos-related cancers. Asbestos is a naturally occurring mineral found underground, around ultramafic rock formations. It became a popular material in construction and manufacturing in the late 1800s. It was used in just about everything, from insulation to roofing shingles, flooring, cement, brake pads, and gaskets. Asbestos was especially popular due to its stability. It's very flexible, but doesn't break easily. It's a great electrical insulator, doesn't corrode from acid, and is resistant to temperatures as high as 1600 Fahrenheit. Asbestos gets these unique properties from its silicon oxygen bonds, known as a silicate group. These silicate groups are what also make asbestos a carcinogen. Silicate, along with magnesium, form a repeating three dimensional lattice structure making a crystal. This crystal and structure grows into a long, thin, flexible strand, giving a fibrous appearance. These fibers can be as small as 200 nanometers in diameter, about 300 times smaller than a human hair. Due to their nanoscopic size, if asbestos is disturbed during insulation or demolition, its fibers can stay airborne for up to 72 hours. If breathed in, they can travel deep into the lungs, where they get lodged and tangled into narrow airways. Specifically, asbestos ends up in thin passages, called the terminal bronchioles, and small inflatable sacs called alveoli. Once lodged in lung tissue, asbestos fibers will remain there indefinitely. Being rigid and sharp, these crystalline fibers cut and puncture lung tissue, causing inflammation known as asbestosis. Any damage inflicted is repaired with scar tissue, but asbestos fibers cut and puncture again, prompting more scar tissue. The buildup of scar tissue, called pulmonary fibrosis, makes the lungs less elastic, preventing them from fully expanding during inhalation, negatively affecting the individual's ability to breathe. But it's not just scar tissue that poses a problem. Decades of repeated inflammation damages cell DNA, resulting in cancer cells, consequently leading to lung cancer. Occasionally, some fibers will puncture through lung tissue and get pushed into the mesothelium, a protective lining that covers the lungs. Asbestos fibers also cause cancer of the mesothelium from decades of inflammation. This cancer is called mesothelioma. This is the cancer you have probably seen in hundreds of legal action commercials. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with mesothelioma, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Unfortunately, both lung cancer and mesothelioma are known to be very aggressive cancers with a low survival rate. Compared to other hazards that have tolerable levels of exposure, like radiation, carbon monoxide, and arsenic, asbestos has no safe level of exposure. This is because the fibers accumulate in the lungs, permanently, with no recourse for removal. Due to its unsafe levels, asbestos was outright banned in all products by the EPA in 1989 under the Toxic Substances Control Act. However, in 1991, an appeals was made through the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, allowing partial use of asbestos in flooring felt, rollboard, and specialty paper. In 2002, the last asbestos mine was finally shut down in the United States. In 2024, the Biden-Harris administration finalized a rule to prohibit ongoing uses of crustatile asbestos, the last form of it being used in manufacturing. Despite the ban, there are still ongoing issues. Millions of homes and buildings were built with asbestos products, like insulation, roofing, and flooring, before the 1989 ban. This poses a significant risk for those in the renovation and demolition industries. It's likely that it will take several decades, maybe even a century, before asbestos is totally removed from our lives.